today we're going to start the drum kit lessons using one of the books that I recommended. So I'm making two assumptions in this lesson. One is that A, you've got a drum kit of some description and B, that you've probably started buying the rock school syllabus. First one is this one called Debut, which if you will is kind of grade zero. Um, it is very, very basic, but a great place to start. Um, before you can play and use this, we have to learn drum notation or drum music. And if you go to the back of the book, and if you haven't got the book yet, for this lesson I will actually be showing everything on the screen. Um, it will start coming up now. But essentially, you will. we've already been through which notes are which. So in that first section you'll see the bass drum, the floor tom, medium tom and high tom, or mounted tom 1, mounted tom 2, um, or floating tom, another term for it. The snare drum, you will see the snare, which is the normal hit. Ghost note, we'll worry about that. what that is, but that's a very softly played snare drum note. Rim shot, you, know, you hit the rim and the snare at the same time makes a very loud accented sound. Cross stick, which is another one we'll learn in a little bit where you actually have the stick resting across the snare and you lift it up and it gives you like a click sound. Um, and we've talked about in our rudiments lesson the buzz snare or the, the closed roll. Uh, next section we're looking at is hi-hats. We have closed, we have half open, we have open. Closed with the plus is the foot, um, and that's that's very important. You know, learning that there's a difference. Um, the second close there is where you close a hi hat without it being struck. Um, why they're differentiated, I'm not really sure. A lot of the time, um, these are one and the same. The high foot, high hat, foot closed and hi-hat a foot open. Um, so yeah, a lot of variation. You probably won't see all of those until much later grades. And then we have the symbols. Most important bit is understanding the ride symbol, the first note, and the third note, the crash symbol. Okay, but we also have the bell of the ride, which is something you will use in later grades. Uh, crash where you let it ring out, ring on and a crash roll where you sort of roll your sticks with like a single stroke roll and a crash. Okay, we have the accentuated note or accent note as uh, we normally say it. Slashes are what are used to demarcate bars during solos, so fills, developments, other things. So sometimes you might have two bars and then it will have a two in those slashes which basically says play the same thing again um, but develop it, build it up, you know, start adding some of your own interpretation notes, etc. Um, we start getting into real musical notation then, like stuff which you've seen in many instruments. So the DSL coda, which means uh, go back to the coda sign. Um, and that's for repeating. So you'll play a section and you'll have passed a coda sign and then you'll see the DSL coda tells you to go back to the coda. Or you have DCL fine which means go back to the beginning of the the song um, uh, and play up until you get to the bit that says fine or as they pronounce it fine which is, means end. Uh, we have the repeat the previous bar. That repeat symbol is one you'll see a lot in drumming because drumming can be quite repetitive. So rather than having to write the beats out over and over again, they will put that in um, to say just play the same as you played last time. Okay. Um, we've already talked about rudiments, so we've we've looked at those slashes and the accent. We've seen those rolls before, so I'm not going to cover that again. Um, repeat bars, so the thick line, the thin line, and then the two dots. Basically, you'll see a beginning, facing from left in and right outwards, 
which basically means you start at one point, you play through to when you see the right facing inwards repeat sign, and then you go back to the left repeat sign. And so you will do that. Commonly, you'll see the next one where there's a one and a two. So it's the same thing, you're going to repeat. But the first time round, you'll play the thing that's in the bracket number one. Second time round, you'll play what's in number two. And then you'll go on with the music afterwards. Okay, and then the repeat sign with the two above, where it's going to cross two bars, means just repeat the last two bars. And you'll see that quite a lot, I think, in about grade three, you start seeing a lot of very prolonged drum patterns where they just tell you to repeat over and over and over. A fill is basically where you play, normally around the toms or the snare or something, but it's up to you, some interpretation. Develop means to start adding notes into it, to start making it sound fuller and a bit more than, but keeping the general structure of what you were playing. Um, Continue sim means to continue in a similar way, but you can just throw in a few variations here and there. And writ, which is short for written dando, um, that is a, means to gradually slow down, and that is a great effect in drumming, to have a writ at the end of a song normally, leading into maybe some cymbal washes or some fills or a bit of a solo or something like that at the end while the band all go nuts. You see that a lot in sort of rock and heavy metal music, etc. But some more modern pop sort of chart songs have got similar, it slows down at the end of the song or in a section. Um, so a root is a very, very important thing. But I think it's just important to understand the music notes, so I thought we would go through that before we start getting any into any actual drumming. Uh, so hopefully that is all self-explanatory and what you'll start to see as we get through these books is that all these things are lined up so you'll need to refresh yourself on the musical notes and the notation and the groupings and how many hits per beats you get and then this tells you what to hit and some of the other musical aspects that you'll see going around it. Another important thing is to read the little write-up section that they will have um, on a piece of music. So here is the first song, Yellow by Coldplay. It's a subsection and it's a, a simplified version of what they actually play. But there's a write-up here for you to understand. And I will often drop in um, some some notes or something like that before I play something. Rather than me talking you through it, I'll just put some stuff up on the screen saying here's some things to look out for um, when you watch it. Best thing to do is to read the notes before you read musical piece. Listen to the musical piece, okay, the full as it will be on the download that you get. Um, then Watch me play it, see where I'm, what hands I'm using for what, the sticking, etc. Um, if I put any notes up before the song, read them as well. And then between all that, that should give you everything you need to start mimicking what I play so that you can actually learn the song. Okay? It's a bit of a different way of doing it compared to traditional drum lessons, but it does work. You can do video drum lessons in this way. You've got to read the sections, know what you're looking for before you try and play it, watch someone play it. Normally if we were in face-to-face -face lessons I would play it for you and then we'd swap over and you would have a go at some of the bits. And the important thing when you're doing drum lessons and you're actually playing on the kit, don't worry about the timing initially, okay? Just learn the notes, what's being played. Play it really slowly, build it up, and when you think you're playing at tempo, then start playing to the recordings. Initially play it to the full version, so that you've got the band there, you've got um, the music. Then you can start playing um, with a click with no drums to make sure you're staying on beat. Record yourself, make sure what you think you're hearing, you're actually hearing. And then the last bit is to play it without a click and see how you get on. Do you keep in time with the band when you've got nothing helping you? Because there are plenty of times when you're drumming where you will actually play without actually having a click with you. Um, 
you know, there are a number of scenarios you don't always get to have a click track when you're playing drums. So you are responsible for keeping the time and you're responsible for keeping time with the band. So you've got a dual purpose role that kind of is, is going both ways. One, you're keeping the time for them, but you've also got to keep in time with them as well. Um, so it, it's kind of like a dog chasing its own tail in, in many respects, kind of like who's actually setting the tempo. But you can't be in a situation when you're not all playing to a click track or a metronome or something where you start getting out of time with each other. If, if they start speeding up, you may have to speed up if you're not using a click track and you're not got that discipline to make sure that you actually can all play together and keep in time and it's a good musical piece even if it is varying in tempo. Um, there's albums recorded now where you can actually hear the tempo changes between the band. They obviously went to the studio and decided not to play with the click. Some bands make those decisions. Okay, so go through the different pieces but watch me play them. Um, play along with me or play along with the full recording that you get from the Rock School download then play it without the drums but to a click, then play the version with nothing. It's just you and the band. Okay, record it, make sure it sounds right. When you're happy it sounds right, move on. So I will put these, these up sort of every few weeks probably in between the rudiment lessons and other things we're doing. But realistically, especially at debut level when you're first starting out, it might take you a year or two to get through this book. I'm going to get through it in weeks, but it might take you a good year or two to actually do this piece. Um, that's okay, you know, it, it, this is at your pace. And if we were doing drum lessons, you would come along each week and I would show you what to do and you'd have a go. But if you can't play, you can't play it. And we'd keep on going through it over and over again, week after week after week, probably for a small section. We'd do some rudiments, then some drum kit work maybe a few other things and see how we get on. Um, this is for you to take it the pace you need to take it at, okay? But so to continue on with the next lesson, which I'll be putting up, which is drum kit, you need to read about the musical notations, stuff like looked at that again, that, that lesson. You need to have looked at this one and understand what the musical notes are telling you to hit and where. Um, you then need to look at that first piece and follow the notes in the book. Any notes I put up on the screen, watch me play it. Play it really slow yourself. When you think you've got it all accurate and up to tempo, then play it along to the full recording, either with me or with the, the band. Um, then with the click, and then without the click. One last thing. I think I said it when in the introductory video, for the first about three grades, I'm not going to be 100% precise on time. Um, I'm doing that to show you it's okay to play a little bit loose when you're first learning. Once I get to about grade four, I'm going to be dead on the beat and be precise as I can be, okay? And even then, I may not be 100% on the money all the time. Very few drummers are, and if they are, they're generally playing you know, professionally because they're that good but it's something for you to get started with so get the debut book make sure you have a drum kit and let's get started learning the drums on the drum kit okay if you do not have a drum kit yet just keep on doing the rudiment lessons as I've said many times before that will put you in a good stead so that when you do have a drum kit when you have invested in one or if you're a child, you're waiting for parents to buy you one for a birthday or Christmas or something like that, you can then get started, okay? If you want to get started but you don't have a kit, something you can do, it's not ideal, but it will work, especially in these lower grades, is you could just set up something like some cushions or something, have a foot pedal or just tap on the floor or something and just play with a makeshift sort of kit. It's not ideal, it's not a great way to learn. You may struggle moving from that to an actual drum kit when you get one, but it will allow you to get started. So you could do that if you wanted to, okay? But really, by this point, we're gonna start going through these books in every second or third lesson or something in between rudiments and other lessons we do. Very important that you have the book and you have the drum kit, you get started. And remember, um, start slow, build up to tempo. Once you're at tempo, 
start recording yourself, making sure that you're doing what you need to do. Okay, so hope that's all clear. Thank you very much and have a good week. See you later.